finally here's the video for this uh, ICS Wipe Master which is a 9 drive data destroyer uh, sorry ID disk drive sanitizer uh, basically what this does is you plug in a whole bunch of drives and hit go and it will sit there and do a Department of Defense level drive erasure on every single drive simultaneously and you can see that it's got nine parallel ATA hookups at the top this is kind of annoying because obviously most drives these days are serial ATA but it comes with a bunch of uh, parallel ATA cables hard drive side unit side you just plug it in plug in the hard drive there are power connectors which give you a standard Molex and they're all individually hooked up and they're all individually turned on with well probably MOSFETs inside I haven't really looked but uh, you gotta keep an, keep an eye out when you're buying one of these make sure that you buy it with the power connectors because these are slightly small Molex connectors they might be a little annoying to find especially if you get you need to get all eight of them built you might end up having to spend more money than this thing I think I paid about 50 bucks for this thing and it's pretty complete it came with all nine power cables which is good came with uh, six parallel ATA connectors which is cables which is fine because uh, these are just regular cables you can just use any of them spare ones that you have and the only thing that mine is missing is a plastic tray that goes up here which I really wish I had I didn't realize like I didn't really think of how important it was but basically it holds all the drives like this when you're uh, erasing it and the thing that makes it a no like you know it's easy enough to just put the drives there it's just sitting it's not like it's getting banged around but because there's a tension on the parallel ATA cables because if I gra grab one you can see that you have to like bend it in a weird way to get it to actually uh, connect into the drive so there's a lot of pressure trying to twist them so yeah the drive holder thing would be great unfortunately mine didn't come with it and I'm yeah I have like an eBay search going to try and find another one but I don't think it's very likely I'll find it just cuz who's gonna be selling just the plastic tray and I haven't been able to find a like a suitable replacement I purchased a sans digital uh, tower that ho holds four drives and I figured or sorry five drives figure what the hell you know I can just do five at a time but the just the positioning of that put a lot of pressure on all the wiring and it just it didn't work outside to return it this thing can erase serial ATA drives you need to get an adapter now I have three here this came with another drive eraser and it's covered in blue latex for some strange reason I got one of these that I bought on eBay so you just run in the parallel ATA connection the Molex and it spits out serial ATA for your hard drive the catch with these is that you gotta make sure you get the right way because a lot of them are serial ATA motherboard to parallel ATA drive you need serial ATA drive to parallel ATA motherboard which you know as long as you make sure you buy the right one it's not a problem so uh, these all seem to use different controllers but they all seem to basically do the same thing uh, this is an even smaller one does the same thing one thing about this one is it came with all the pins installed so and there's no indicator of which pin one is so I had to take a 50-50 chance and cut the pin and plug in the connector and see if it would fry it so if you buy one that's the pin you remove for future reference anyway uh, you know these are a couple bucks and since I usually have a pretty good mix of parallel and serial ATA drives it's not a huge deal you know I could do 50 50 or you know I've, I've I think four or five of these adapters and you can also use a CF card adapter you can use I presume I haven't tried this one but you can use a, a PCM CIA adapter and I've got some disk on modules that all seem to work although you need varying adapters to, to do these some of them need power, some of them don't. Some of them use the two and a half inch ID hard drive connector. Some of them uh, use a standard one. So, you know, you need, you need a set of adapters if you want to use this with everything. 
out of the box, all it works with are parallel ATA hard drives. But like I said, you can use the serial ATA adapter and you'll get the three and a half inch and the two and a half inch since they share a connector. And you can even do solid state drives because it just, uh, you know, shows up as another drive. Uh, one thing to note about solid state drives, if you're really, really, really serious about destroying the data, technically on a ser uh, solid state drive, when you run a drive erase through one of these, it can't delete everything. Because, oh, and it, this also applies to CF cards and um, basically all flash media. Because of the way the controller handles uh, the flash memory, you can't be sure that you're erasing everything because the controller will have portions that it determines that are old or maybe it's having trouble with, so it par partitions them off and hides them from the operating system. And it, what it will do is it will, uh, they have reserved memory that they'll just start using so your capacity doesn't go down. Like on, um, you know, my Samsung, I think it's like 8% of the drive memory is used up by over provisioning. So it's got a little, you know, you can have up to 8% of the memory break or be determined that it's bad before uh, you actually start losing space. So what happens is when you hook this up to this thing, it erases all it can see, not these partitioned off spaces, which in theory could have a small amount of your data. Not a big problem for, you know, the average home user, but you know, it is something to be aware of that it does retain data. The way to get rid of data on these things is to use the manufacturer supplied software to initiate an erase and it can send a special command to the controller to completely wipe the drive. And on modern drives that have, well, this is a fairly modern drive, but on drives with built-in encryption, even if you're not using the encryption, the drive itself encrypts all the data. And the idea is that when you send an erase command via their software, all it does is tell the controller to delete its internal encryption code so it doesn't even have to wipe the data. It can just leave the data there because it's all been scrambled by the fact that you it, it's always encrypting data to the drive and you've just deleted the key. So now it's useless. So uh, iPhones do that too. I think after the 3GS and newer and you know, Android phones do it too. I don't know which uh, specific uh, versions of Android OS do it, but like on my phone, if I tell my phone to wipe itself, it takes two seconds to wipe 128 gigs because what it's doing is it's just deleting its internal encryption key and making the drive unreadable. That's how they're able to delete it, delete themselves so fast. My old iPhone 3G took like two hours to delete the 16 gigs of data because it was doing a zero all data thing on the drive and it just it took forever on the memory chips, I should say. The way this thing works is it's got a little graphical interface on it. You got three buttons here, directional pad, a little help button, which is not very helpful. And, you know, I have the aforementioned drive interfaces at the front. There's a CF card reader. I just stuck a 256 meg one in here. This does um, logging. It, does not, it doesn't let you erase CF cards through here. Like I said, you have to use a, an adapter like this guy. But you can uh, plug this in and it will save the output logs. This little cutout is actually because this is originally supposed to be a PCM CIA slot and this is the eject button and if you look in the manual for this thing it actually does say uh, PC card slot instead of CF card slot so obviously they revised it in a future run. Uh, keep in mind that PCM CIA hard drives, or you know, drives I should say, and CF cards are all basically ide uh, identical in terms of their, their electrical signals. So all they need, like this has no active circuit, Oop, dropped it. Uh, that adapter has no uh, active circuitry on it. See, there's just, you know, a couple caps for power and stuff like that. There's no actual, uh, and a vo voltage regulator, 
because this this one has a bunch of options for different power supplies but uh, you don't actually need any active circuitry to make an adapter for this because they they speak ATA so it doesn't doesn't need anything fancy so they probably just did a really simple change to the PCB to do this there's also an RJ45 connector which is not Ethernet it is a serial connector I have not used it I don't know what I think it just outputs the same stuff I don't know if you can actually send this commands or if it just outputs commands on the back there is the little information thing this is the wipe master with two s's it's the gr-4000-001e and it's made in the usa and there's also a small cutout here you can see that it's clearly a 1U power supply. So they're using a standard 1U power supply with a clunking power switch and a 40 millimeter fan. And this thing is loud. I hate this power supply. <laughs> it's kind of funny because I've taken apart so many uh, 1U networking devices over the years and I didn't save a quieter power supply. I should have saved one. The one I have is just as loud as this thing. So hopefully I get some uh, new networking stuff in the future and I can pick out a power supply that's very quiet. Because although this one's, I think it says like silent supply, believe me it is not. It's quite loud and you also have all the sound from all the hard drives running. So yeah, pretty terrible. Uh, I want to change that out. The way this is arranged is this is a master and these are all targets. And the reason why they're named that is because this is actually another product called the Image Master. And this just has custom firmware on it to uh, only let it wipe drives. Whereas the Image Master allows it to take a master drive and duplicate it simultaneously to all these other drives. And you, I think you can get a software upgrade for the Image Master to let it do the wiping. So you could basically get two in one with that. Whereas this thing, as far as I know, you can only do the wiping which is all I need it for but you know just weird that they uh, make two products even though they're basically the same thing anyway I discovered while I was working on this thing that the master interface is much quicker than all the other ones when I hook up say a solid state drive which could easily saturate most uh, connections all this this one's kind of slow but if you hook it up to a, the master it does like 3.6 gigs a minute of erasing speed but if I hook it up to any of the other interfaces it's limited to like six or seven hundred megabytes per minute so when you're erasing a bunch of drives you should usually put the biggest drive in the master slot just because it will uh, it's going to take the most time to do it it's just uh, for some reason the interface is different on all of them Okay, so here we go. This is the interface. It powers up and just says Image Master, which is funny. And i got to wait a few moments. Sorry if it's hard to read. It's really hard to get this screen uh, without glare. Okay, so I've plugged in a serial ATA uh, style solid state drive, the one I was showing earlier. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all the menus. So we've got Run, Set, Info. Run obviously starts up the destruction system uh, setting and you can do some basic info so let's go to the info first actually I'll just hit this stupid help button first press run to start copying press back to go back to the main screen thank you that's a lot of help anyway so you can go under info and you can bring up info on the actual device itself it says this is actually the white master PXA and the software version the software is actually fairly easy to update. I just stuck it on a CF card. The website has a huge list of firmware and you just grab the one you need and it will update itself when you turn it on. The serial number is meaningless, 87654. I think that's something you can set yourself. And you got contrast for the display. Tactical support just tells you to go to their website, which is quite nice. And drive info. <clears throat> will allow you to take a look at a specific drive and in this case I've hooked it up to target 5 go over to target 5 now what it's going to do is it's going to power up the drive it's attempting to identify it 
second. Uh, I picked a solid state drive to keep the noise down. This this fan makes enough noise as it is. So it's saying Samsung multi-level cell uh, solid state drive. It's 61 gigs, give or take. And it shows you the um, modes it supports, such as ATA7 for the fastest interface, blah, 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 blah. And you can go to info. And again, load for a little bit. And it shows that there's one unknown partition on it. Now, this will actually detect partitions and tell you how big they are and blah, 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 blah. I can't remember, but I think it supports NTFS, FAT, and HFS, which is Apple's format. And I, it might support a Linux format or two. But it basically will show you the partitions on the drive, even if it doesn't know uh, what format they are, which is good because you can check to see if there's anything on the drive before you erase it, although it's obviously a lot better to just do it on a computer. And we've got the upgrade software button, which is kind of funny because it just tells you to insert the CF card and reboot. It doesn't actually do anything. Like, you never need to do that. All you have to do is put the thing in and it will do it automatically. So I don't even know why there's a menu option, but I guess it's just to give you a little info on it. So you can go into settings and you can give it... Uh, Two, there's two main settings to, to run the drive destruction, which is the fast mode and the DOD level mode. And the DOD level mode doesn't actually have any settings, whereas fast has um, the number of iterations you can run. And it defaults to three. I don't know if it's all that good. Fast, I haven't really played too much around with. I think what it does is it tries to issue the serial ATA or the parallel ATA wipe command which I don't know if all drives support and it tries to just destroy itself whereas the DOD one will sit there and do many wipes I believe it's seven by default or seven with the D DOD mode and it will sit there and it will just one 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 zero 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 over and over and over until it's reached its number of, of erases and it takes a long time. When I have nine drives hooked up to this of varying size, it usually says it'll be done in three days. Getting back to the interface, uh, the settings, you can go down to hard drive handling, which lets it, um, well, it basically tells you how it's gonna handle every single aspect of when it's interfacing with a drive. For example, if it encounters a bad sector, you can tell it what to do, oops, hit run. Um, you know, you can uh, tell it to enable or disable the hard drive cache, whether or not to clear it. You can force speed selections on your uh, hard drive interface. It, it says do not use this to uh, <laughs> manually overrun the drive to, to run it quicker because it'll, it'll screw up. So, uh, and auto run, blah, blah, blah. Benchmark, what it does is when you start up the drive erasing, it will test the speed of a single drive and uh, well on default what it'll do is it'll test the speed of all nine drives at once to calculate how long it's going to take to erase the the whole thing single I believe just makes it so it does it one at a time so it takes a little longer to do the benchmark but I think it's a little more accurate and certify uh, what this does is I believe it powers up the drive shuts it off powers it up, shuts it off, and it does it a certain number of times to verify that the drives actually power on and off, which is good because, you know, if you're reselling them, which is the whole purpose of me getting this thing because I resell a lot of drives, uh, you know, you get a little thing to say, yes, you uh, tested it, and you got right, blah, 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 you know, you have all these things for uh, transfer size, and I don't know, uh, I think the NTS, NTFS defragment thing is for duplication, not for this. Because I think when you duplicate an NTFS drive, you can have it, if the master is fragmented, it will defragment the data as it writes to it, but I, I'm not 100% sure on that one. And as you can see, there's little glitches with the uh, user interface. It's not a big deal, but it, it does it when you're going through the settings. Under Options... These are basically paid upgrades, kind of like a modern oscilloscope where you would get the basic unit and you can add on extra stuff. Uh, what I've got is the database, which basically stores a database file onto the CF card. 
Wipeout, which is the drive erasing, so it would be kind of useless without that. HPA and DCO, what these do are, this is these are kind of methods for, for hiding information on a hard drive, like making invisible partitions and stuff like that. So with, with HPA and DCO added, it lets it wipe out those extra portions of the drive, and it lets you view them as well, uh, whereas a normal computer usually ignores it. There's also a remove option thing, which no, I don't want to. I don't want to find out what this does, so uh, I'm just gonna actually just power off the set thing because I I'm sure one of these just cancels it, but I, I don't want to I don't want to risk it. So um, yeah, it lets you put in a code to remove. Uh, you need an authorization code to to remove everything, and I think the code is just the serial number that you set or something. But anyway. Those those are our options that I don't have the codes for to re-enable, so I don't want to risk wiping them out. I was concerned when I did the firmware upgrade that it would wipe it out. So what I'm going to do is I've still got this drive plugged in. Let's tell it to run, and it brings up wipeout DoD, an estimated time, the total percentage of how much it's erased, how how many megs a minute it's doing, and a little graph. So I'm going to hit run. First, it uh, powers up all the drives simultaneously. There we go, powering up. So it's indicated that all of them are uh, it's sending the power to each one, and it's trying to identify it, and it's realizing, no, nope, no drives here, no drives here, in a second. This one's blinking, because it's actually accessing it, because it's realized there is a physical drive attached. And now it's beginning to write. And you can see it's starting off at 1.6 gigs a minute. The little graph is heading up. You got your estimated time. And this should uh, stabilize. Oh, it's actually going faster than I thought it would. I thought the um, I thought the other interfaces were limited to like 700 megs a second. But I guess this one maybe needed a reboot or something. I don't know. Maybe there's some firmware bug where sometimes it doesn't go full speed. Because I did test it with this solid state drive and it was what was showing the slower speed on them so I don't know who the hell knows but anyway it's gonna sit here and it's gonna write each pattern and it will just go through each one and it takes a long time in this case four out four and a half hours even though it's a solid state drive so it should be pretty quick and that's only remember that's only for 64 gigs so you gotta keep in mind how much this scales remember it's exponentially because it's writing it multiple times that as you increase the size it drastically increases the amount of time it takes to erase the drive and then there's a little report yes and it just powers down the drives and it's showing red for the ones it wasn't able to do green because it did find one and it gives you a little output log um, smart information that kind of stuff now one thing I've noticed is that I mean, it says it's doing the smart log and stuff, but I haven't been able to really get that much information from the logging. Maybe it's all in the database. So I, I need to look into how you read that database. All right, you take off a whole bunch of screws along the front and the back and the sides and everything. And then you can get this out. Just have to reach in, disconnect power. So on the bottom, we've got a standard Sparkle power power supply. It's a one U size with active power uh, factor correction and noise killer, which is such a lie because these two fans are super loud. And you can see that it's just using the standard ATX power connector, nothing else. The, uh, they, they obviously got like some kind of custom board or power supply made because this is only the four and eight pin power connectors for a motherboard and you can stick that back on because it keeps falling off and yeah so they just have this one connection to the whole unit and there's a big uh, piece of ferrite on it to knock out that uh, noise and yeah that's it and the whole thing is thick metal like it is a really nicely built device let me just get that out of the way. We're not going to bother opening up the power supply because there's nothing really in it. It's just a regular power supply. So when you get to the actual board, you realize that this thing's actually fairly impressive. I mean, look at all this. You'd think it's not, not that complicated to do something like this, but they do actually have a really beefy system under here. You can see the big 
uh, caps for uh, filtering the power. There's a whole bunch of, it looks like little switch mode power supplies. Most likely making the 5 volt line because this thing probably actually only runs off 12 volt and then um, converts everything down. Although the logic and stuff may use the 3.3 uh, and 5 volt connections that are supplied from the ATX. I mean, it looks like this is a switch mode converter. Like you've got an inductor, a diode, and a little chip. But you know w what exactly they're doing with it? I assume it's they're that they're making the 5 volt rail with this, because hard drives use a 5 and a 12 volt rail. So here on the front, this is the display. It's a very large display, and we've got another panel behind it. There's a little two wire connector going to the display for the backlight. We've got these nice push connectors for the display interface and this one for the touch interface or the, the buttons I should say and everything is installed with these quarter inch nuts which is kind of annoying in fact I opened this up before and I was using my drill just on low speed and I accidentally just went Vroom! and it gouged out some of the board they were smart and they put a lot of uh, just they held everything back so that it doesn't affect anything Okay, I've taken out all the boards, and this is the little window for the display. And you can see they've put really nice RFI gaskets in. The, all the screws, or sorry, I should say all the nuts, bolt into these little standoff uh, shafts that have, uh, you know, they're screws, basically. And they have little separator washers, and they've put little spacers here all along the, the board just to keep uh, all the components from touching the metal. So it's very nicely done. You can see how there's cutouts for all the buttons. This is the front panel board, all the little switches. We've got some flip-flops made by Texas Instruments, some little resistor packs. I like how the bicolor LEDs are in uh, SOT23 packages. I don't think I've ever seen them like that. Usually they're uh, four pin, at least the ones I've seen. So you can see how the board <coughs> is designed to uh, run along the width of the device with all the LEDs for the drives and they've just put a little bit of extra PCB that's actually got a trace going to it for grounding a little bit of extra PCB just for mechanical stability so you can you have space to bolt it down on that side and yeah you just use a multi-way ribbon connector here we've got the display this is made by lcmdisplays.com <laughs> Uh, this is a 240 pixel by 64 pixel display. They have different models, but I believe this is uh, an LED backlight as opposed to they have a, an electroluminescent one and a standard uh, cold cathode. So uh, it's definitely not EL, but uh, I'm fairly certain it's a LED just because it's missing all this DC to DC converter stuff that uh, would be present on something that needed weird voltages. So this has like 32k of memory, its own controller, and you know, it's it's a pretty nice display. This is probably uh, pretty expensive to buy on its own. Although for the most part, the mechanical engineering of this thing is really, really nice. You know, really well built, metal, you know, just tough, built to stand up to an environment where you're doing 50 drives a day or whatever. They did make some like weird design decisions. Like one, they still used one of these nuts here to hold the display, and even though it's too close to actually do it, so they're stuck using a, a pair of pliers to get that on, instead of uh, you know just using a ratchet driver because this connector is in the way and this doesn't come off. It's like a snap-on thing, and it it's a uh, one single-use snap-on. They also did it on the motherboard, where uh, they've got, let me see if I can get this into shot. See? They, instead of using one of these standard, just a pin header, they decide to use one of these, you know, really nice connectors where it uh, actually, like, um, grips in the, the ribbon cable. But look, it goes over this hole. So uh, on the board, this doesn't even have a nut in it. They don't even bother putting one in weird as you can see there's a daughter board that goes right here and this appears to be a standard uh, like PC 100 so dim connector that they just happen to be using 
And this is another one of those cases where they've not really taken into consideration the fact that they're going to be using these headers. So obviously they didn't, um, the shrouded header, they obviously didn't think of this when they first built it because this doesn't clear with this in the way. You have to like really bend it and it's, it's just not pretty hooking this up. This is a Marvel made chip on here. It's the main CPU. It's uh, based on an Intel uh, PXA270 which is their um, X scale and it's an x86 CPU I believe. I think all the X, X scale chips are uh, x86 base. And this uh, can run from 104 to 624 megahertz. So I don't know what the actual clock speed they're running this at is. And we've got some SD RAM and what appears to be 64 megs of flash memory. And on the other side, we've got some power and bypassing stuff. We have a, a Xilinx CPLD. You can I can tell it's a CB, CPLD without even looking it up because CPLD programming header. How convenient. They've soldered it in and bent it on, on an angle. They've got a whole bunch of test points along here. And as you can see, Intelligent Computer Solutions PXA270 model version B. There's also space for a USB connection, which is interesting. Maybe I'll try hooking that up one day. There is a, what appears to be space for a SD card interface. And there's another one over here. And this is a space for another CPLD, but they never populated it. I wonder if that goes with the SD card to provide a, an electrical interface to it. There's some power supply stuff. Yeah, that's the main uh, module. They probably put these in all of their stuff, and they're probably interchangeable. And it has a general programming header, which probably just programs the flash. Main board is labeled ICS, IM4008i, and it's revision 3G. We've got a Xilinx Spartan, I guess this is an FPGA as well. Uh, another a big Spartan, which is the uh, XC2S100, which is 1,000 gates, and or 100,000 gates, 40K of block memory, blah, 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 blah. It's kind of mid-range. And what else we've got here? All this um, logic for the drive interfaces. You can see the pins for each parallel inter parallel ATA interface. So this is all like 74 series and whatnot. Uh, these appear to be the little MOSFETs that turn on and off the power. Got these nice uh, caps here. They look like uh, 680 mic caps, big surface mount caps, just helping with the power supply for these things. All the drives. And a bunch of test points. Windows CE embedded 6.0. Huh. I did not know this thing would be running Windows. This looks like it's a spot for the 8-pin CPU power connector from a power supply. I don't know if it's optional, like you pick one or the other, or if uh, you know you can supply it with more power. Maybe there's a different board that can um, chew through more power, so it needs the additional... 12 volt supply, but here's the ATA or ATX power connector, and we've got some board designations here. And uh, one's for uh, they're both for um, disk on modules, and you can see populate R102 for a 3.3 uh, disk on chip, I should say, and 10 sorry 102 for a 3.3 volt and 103 for a 5 volt, and you can see the 102 is populated. And there's this big resistor here. This must have something to do with the LCD because that's where this is running off to. And we got a lithium battery for backup for the configuration. I tested it, it's still good. Down here, there's uh, some jumper selection for the LCD type and the number of targets. So I don't know if this lets you convert this to a different model or not, but you know. I already have the one that has all the drives, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Connector for the LED backlight. There's another one up here that's not populated. I guess it's just whatever one, uh, wherever the wire can reach, they populate. And it looks like these are connectors for either a CF or a 2.5 inch hard drive connector. 
And it's possible that some models have these populated on the back and it pokes through the front of the case. So you can actually uh, interface to that, but I'm not sure. Again, it's one of those things I may populate one day and see what happens. We've got the obvious space for the PCM CIA header or uh, socket, but they didn't use it. They have a CF card socket installed instead. Here's the RJ45. And yeah, I mean, it's it's really just um, a mic, uh, sorry, an Intel CPU controlling some FPGAs and, you know, some CPLDs for the odd thing. And they're all uh, just spewing out data. There aren't controller chips here for a parallel AD ATA interface. It's not like they have like five, you know, Marvel or Silicon Image, whatever, uh, chips here running it. They're doing it all in the in the uh, FPGAs and just dumping all the bits out. And you know, since this thing's designed to do cloning too, you know, the FPGA I think helps them uh, reconfigure itself depending on what they need to do. So you know, I guess it's the the more complex solution, but it's probably the better solution, especially if you can upgrade the FPGA to support new. Um, parallel ATA interface modes, whereas the serial or the the controllers probably couldn't do that as effectively. And the back is just nothing really, except for all the connectors. A bypass cap connector for the power. These are all the ATA connect parallel ATA connectors. Now a lot of these are bent on mine and a lot of them are broken on the edges so I think what happened is someone dropped this with drives hooked up and it smashed it so what I did is buy a whole bunch of these uh, just plain headers so one day probably not today but one day I'd like to replace all of these with these new ones that don't have any bent pins because the problem is even when you bend them back as best as you can usually they're off by a little bit and it's not hard to put in a connector and it just knocks it way off like some of these are just way way off and yeah so I think it's just easier to grab the desoldering gun and get rid of all these things this is what happened when I used my drill to put the nuts back on <laughs> you can see it went right through the board and crushed the board obviously they were smart and left the traces far enough back that it doesn't get damaged because a lot of motherboards on uh, computers, especially older ones, if you screw up and tighten a screw down too much, you can actually crush the traces and completely kill your board. And I, and it's a little here. Actually, this one might have already been like that, but this one I know I did. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, be careful. And you can see there's a little uh, program memory for the CPLD here, and there's one for the FPGA as well. And that's about it. Oh, uh, one last thing. They did solder in these little ceramic caps to the back. These are the power connectors for the drives. They soldered in these rather big uh, ceramic caps to the two pins on each one. I guess they're having some little problems with it, so they decided to just put on an extra cap. And I think that's probably it for this one.